Hi everybody, Richard Tromans here again, Artificial Lawyer TV. Today we're doing another product walkthrough, uh, this time with Claws Buddy, uh, which is part of a larger company. And to tell us more about it is Senna. Hi Senna, how are you doing? Hi Richard, thank you for having me. Um, could you just tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, about the company, and then I will and then do the walkthrough, and then I will come back at the end and ask some questions. But either way, please take it away. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, my name's Senna. I'm a former lawyer and one of the co-founders of ClauseBase. Um, we are a company that uh, develops legal drafting products, and indeed today uh, we are going to be focusing on our Microsoft Word add-in product, which is called ClauseBuddy. It's an all-in-one legal drafting tool that assists lawyers with um, drafting, reviewing, negotiating documents, basically the, the typical battle with Microsoft Word. Um, so yeah, um, as you can see, we uh, we're, I'm sharing my screen right now. Uh, on the left-hand side, we just have a, a basic uh, document. On the right-hand side, we have our clause buddy add-in, uh, and we'll just take a, a quick walk through through uh, some of the functionalities that um, we have on offer. This is not the full uh, overview. We are uh, kind of uh, doing a selection of some of the functionalities uh, because we don't have time for the the, the full uh, overview. Uh, but in that case, I think your your viewers will have a, a very good idea of what it is that we offer. Um, starting perhaps with our inspiration module, which allows you to extract clauses from uh, large amounts of precedent data. Uh, so specifically through our truffle hunt functionality, uh, we can uh, kind of hook into precedent databases. Uh, uh, lawyers can upload uh, some of their preferred uh, templates. And we can then with a simple keyword search, for example, like here, we can zoom in on uh, some uh, some useful clauses. Naturally, we're searching for a needle in a haystack, so we're going to get uh, quite a few different results. Um, we can search, uh, filter that search down uh, based on specific uh, metadata fields that are extracted from the documents that we are hooking into. So, for example, we could say, um, you know, in terms of document type, we'd like a consultancy agreement, and then in terms of authors, we want, you know, this person's uh, this person's clauses to be. Uh, used here, and then when we when we want to insert a clause like this, um, we can just kind of uh, look and see. Maybe this is a useful one. Uh, we can just place our cursor and insert it straight into the document. And as you can see, what happens is clause buddy takes this clause, enters it into the document, and like a chameleon, the clause automatically adapts to its environment. Um, so in terms of styling, in terms of formatting, numbering, all of those different things. Um, the clause can also be adapted more to the content of the document through our uh, AI integration. Essentially, what that means is we can, we can for example, ask for uh, an AI um, created translation. Uh, we can provide some kind of instruction to redraft the clause a little bit to make it fit the document a little bit better. We can use some of these default uh, prompts like make this clause neutral. Um, and we can also adapt the terminology. Um, and what that means is, well, as you can see, we, we inserted a clause talking about the consultant in the university into this document, which actually talks about the licensor and the licensee. We could have asked the AI to do an automatic terminology um, kind of conversion, but we can also uh, do that by ourselves in case we don't really trust the AI to make the, uh, the right judgment call there. Um, so what that looks like is we get a full overview of all of the defined terminology used in this clause, and we can just kind of match it to the defined terminology of the document. So we could say the consultant matches with the licensor, university matches with the licensee. Um, and then when we hit redraft, the clause uh, will be redrafted. Um, and we can then still uh, insert that uh, straight away. So we could do something like this. And then we insert that, uh, that clause with uh, track changes on. Now, um, that's in a nutshell our uh, truffle hunt module. So the idea there is that we uh, that we can extract clauses from uh, from precedent documents. The idea here is very much quantity focused. So we have this huge uh, collection of drafting history, um, and we just kind of want to find the right uh, clause that we're thinking of. Maybe something that we drafted four or five years ago. What this doesn't really support is standardization or for example if you are a legal team if you want to make sure that everyone in the team um an in-house legal team rather if you want to make sure that everyone in the the team um uses the same kinds of fallback clauses or the same standard clauses that's where our quality library 
comes into play where you can really collect and curate that knowledge, uh, kind of uh, collect the needles from the haystack here and uh, and collect them uh, and, and insert them into that quality library. Uh, inserting a clause like that is very easy. You just select uh, the clause, hit new clause. You can then choose a location in the library somewhere. You can have this entire folder structure with folders and subfolders. Um, and you can augment that clause as well. You could ask for translations. Like here we have an English clause, but it would be nice if we have it in Dutch and in French as well. And immediately we get uh, um, uh, an AI powered translation. Um, we can augment that with additional keywords to search on, with uh, description and comments in relation to the, the legal status maybe of, of that clause, uh, some attributes as well that we can then also later filter on. Like we could say, you know, this is a company standard clause and um, it is in, on a scale of one to five. It is a relatively short clause, right? Attributes that we are manually curating that maybe an AI wouldn't even know what to, what to do with, uh, especially if it, <clears throat> if it deals with more internal company affairs. Um, this is all uh, part of a more, more curated style overview. And then, uh, yeah, searching for a clause in that library is also just a matter of being able to search with, uh, with specific keywords. Uh, but we can then also filter our search based on the location in the library, based on those attributes that we looked at just now. So those are the two kind of clause-oriented modules that we have. We also have a, a fairly deep generative AI integration. Um, a first element of that is our, our doc chat module, which as the name suggests, allows you to uh, chat with one or more documents. And so we could ask a question like, you know, um, what are the, uh, the indemnification obligations of the parties? Uh, this is just a way to kind of extract useful information directly from a, um, um, document and uh, as you can see here yeah we, we then get this um this this indemnity clause that we just inserted um we also uh, get uh, another clause that was already present in this document and you can see that the ai cites its sources and we can just kind of go through that um uh, go through those those sources by uh, by clicking through them so that's in a nutshell, the, the doc chat. Um, we also support some AI powered drafting functionalities. So um, here with our write and rewrite functionalities, uh, we can uh, say, for example, let's, let's select this entire text. And then let's say that we'll get rid of this, uh, this clause that we just inserted. We'll select the entire text. And then we can say, like, for example, here, we want to redraft what we've selected, um, and then we we can potentially get some some automatic suggestions on, on maybe what else we could do with with uh, the text that we have selected. We can see what uh, what prompts were recently used. We can also uh, sh uh, store prompts in a, in a kind of uh, short prompt library. Um, let's maybe try this one out, um, and then we'll hit redraft. Now, um, as this goes through the document. What I also quickly wanted to add, uh, and I should have shown that uh, right before I hit redraft, but essentially ClauseBuddy is model agnostic. Um, so by default, we use GPT-40, uh, but we are able, as you can see here now in this dropdown, we are able to integrate with a wide vari variety of uh, different uh, large language models. Um, and then you can see here again, like, right? So we, we ask the AI to change the term licensee to plural, including all grammatical conjugations. And you can see that it, it is showing us in a track changes style overview that it did just that. So licensee wishes or licensees wish, et cetera, et cetera, that uh, all across the document, those changes are made. Um, and then if we want to insert that, um, that text, you can also see here straight away that not only does this track changes style text get inserted, but also we're able to completely preserve the style, the original uh, style and formatting and numbering and things like that of the document. This is a notoriously difficult problem uh, to solve. Not even Microsoft's own co-pilot is, is able to, to play nice with the typical numbering styling that you see in contracts uh, like these. Um, so we're, we're pretty excited about that. And there you basically uh, change the entire um, grammatical nuance of the, uh, of the document with a few clicks. Um, so that's the, the redraft functionality. Um, we also have, of course, uh, the ability to, to draft new text from, uh, from uh, on the spot. Um, that does the, the exact same thing, except it doesn't work with existing material, just allows you to 
write clauses um, straight away. Um, one thing I will show uh, as well here is that uh, we can also polish the selected text. So what that does is we can ask the AI to do a kind of final check for us to make sure that there's no obvious errors in this document, that we're not missing anything in terms of um, you know, typos or, or just uh, things that, that are a little bit out of the ordinary that maybe shouldn't be in here. Um, and what we're seeing then is, um, for example, here we get a, a couple of like here, we've got this actual loss sustained and there's, there's a little um, typo there that's that's showing up. Um, we we uh, uh, can get some, some potential um, Reworks here also parties written with a lowercase p when maybe it should be written with a with a capital P. Uh, some uh, uh, some slight corrections that the AI can propose and that we can then optionally insert or not. Um, speaking on the topic of reviewing your document, we also have the ability to um, kind of figure out some of the, the typical drafting errors or find some of the typical drafting errors that sneak into contracts in, in particular. Uh, here under the proofreading functionality, you can see just that. For example, we've got these terms here that are capitalized. So you would expect that there is a definition for them somewhere in the document, um, but actually um, the AI cannot find a definition. Um, and here for that term product, for example, this is the only mention of the term product that it can find. Um, so we know that this is something that maybe we need to uh, to figure out, to, to check and see if, uh, if we need to provide a definition for that term or for those terms. Vice versa, we can also have the situation where a term is defined in the definition list, but the term doesn't actually isn't actually used in the document anymore. Um, that's also uh, part of the, um, the the issues that clause that he can check for, as well as internal comments and, and placeholders, as well as um, these uncapitalized defined terms, or in other words, terms that are frequently used with a capital letter, but then all of a sudden here, these terms are being used in their lowercase letter form. And obviously that creates a big nuance from, uh, from a legal point of view. So um, that's something where the AI can, again, uh, as a kind of uh, final check, um, tell you to, to uh, review some, some issues that may be problematic, uh, broken cross-references, it can detect that, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we can also do more substantive reviewing of the document based on AI-powered uh, reviewing uh, uh, built on top of a, a kind of playbook that you can create for yourself. So um, this is not as formalistic um, as you, you saw with the proofreading functionality, but we can create a, a, diff a couple of rules that we want the AI to check for in documents like this license agreement, for example, um, and then depending on, you know, what our exact prompt was in, in light of those rules, the AI will provide us, as you can see, with a kind of red flag, green flag analysis. Uh, this is the prompt that has been submitted to the AI. And then the AI says, yeah, well, actually, you know, um, applicable law has to be Belgium. But uh, what I'm finding here that is that applicable law is France. Uh, and then we can either uh, insert our own clause that we are pulling directly from our own standard uh, curated library, or we can have the AI rewrite uh, in the manner that you saw just uh, a minute ago. Um, and uh, to wrap things up, um, we are also uh, we do also offer document automation in the context of Clause Buddy. Uh, I talked about uh, earlier about the fact that Clause Base offers two product lines, one being Clause Buddy, the other being Clause Nine. Uh, Clause Nine is a highly advanced document automation form, uh, document automation platform, and Clause Buddy is a more um, basic platform in the sense that it it still has quite a bit of automation power that it can offer, but it's gear, geared more towards uh, being able to very quickly automate uh, basic documents. Um, and to showcase that, uh, what I can show you is that uh, with the help of AI powered uh, document markup, we can essentially prepare a document like this for automation directly from within Word uh, with all of the necessary markup, as you can see, being applied straight away. Um, that's what these blue highlights are doing. So the AI is, is identifying all of the, the variables. Uh, we can then upload the active document and then have the AI generate the entire questionnaire also for us based on all of these, uh, these blue highlights that we've inserted. Um, and if we give it that, if we give the AI a second to just neatly organize this entire questionnaire by topic and by, by um, um, area, then you can see basically that in a matter of seconds, we've automated this, this basic license agreement. And once we start um, filling out this information, you can see that it immediately shows up here. 
This is then something that uh, people in the team can start using to immediately generate first drafts of uh, a document like this. Um, and then finally, we are also offer uh, file operations, which is essentially um, a kind of upgrade on the existing compare functionalities of Microsoft Word. Um, whereas Microsoft Word can only compare a Word document with a Word document, we can compare PDF documents with each other. Uh, we can pair, compare a PDF document with a Word document. We can compare a current document with another document. Or um, you know, we have a, a wide range of, of uh, stuff that we can do here. So if I just upload a, um, a document here um, and uh, maybe do like a, a quick side-by-side -side comparison, and you can see here that we're getting clean track changes style overview and that we can kind of go through all of these different uh, changes side-by-side. And that is a very quick uh, run through of uh, what Clause Buddy has to offer. Uh, as I said earlier, we uh, deliberately kept it short here, uh, but there is quite a bit more in terms of the, the battle with Microsoft Word that, uh, that Clause Buddy can assist with. So um, if anyone's uh, interested in learning more about that, they can uh, go to our website and uh, uh, we'll be happy to, to share some more information there. Fantastic. Thanks, Anna. Really interesting in so many different aspects. Um, probably need to watch that video all over again uh, to, mm -hmm. to really see the detail. Uh, just a couple of quick questions. I'm guessing this has got some generative AI capabilities in it. Um, are you using a mix of models? Yeah, yeah. So indeed, as I was uh, saying earlier, right, so we, we do offer, um, we just uh, um, use a, a quick uh, example here. So we do, uh, we are basically model agnostic. Uh, we use by default the Azure GPT 4.0 uh, model because uh, we find that that uh, provides the best results. But um, as you probably saw, Claude recently released its 3.7 model. Uh, I think that was two days ago uh, from the, the time that we're recording. Um, so that's already been integrated as well. And we're seeing tremendous results uh, with that as well. Um, and yeah, um, as you also reported actually a couple of weeks ago, we also integrated with Knox Tua, which is a kind of uh, legal specific EU based uh, large language model. Uh, we're constantly kind of testing the boundaries of uh, which models perform well under, under which circumstances. Fantastic, fantastic. And <clears throat> excuse me, if somebody wants to bring this on board, whether they're in house or at a law firm, I mean, how do they go about it? Yeah. So typically, um, we offer a two month trial. And that, all of that information is also available on our, on our website. Um, and we kind of sit together with the uh, the law firm or the in-house legal team, because we indeed service both. Um, and we kind of um, analyze which use cases are the, the more low-hanging fruit for them. Clause base as a company consists of around 80% former lawyers. So we're, we're able to kind of come into their business and kind of see, okay, you know, there's a lot of functionalities that we do offer. Which ones are, are we going to focus on? And usually over the course of those first two months, we're able to really score some, some, some quick wins, um, which then form the foundation of, of building on that, uh, finding additional use cases, maybe expanding to different departments, um, off afterwards, uh, after that trial has been completed. Gotcha. And, and the last question um, is about languages. Um, so this will operate in US English, 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 or British English, yeah. other languages, etc. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we are uh, a Belgian team. We're based in Belgium. Um, former lawyers, so we're, we're essentially trilingual. Uh, in Belgium, as a lawyer, you, you have to be able to draft in, in English, Dutch, and French. Um, so that, that sort of multilingual focus has been embedded into the, the entire product suite, uh, including Clause 9, basically from the moment that we started. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, thanks, Senator. That's all we've got time for today. But uh, as you mentioned, if anyone uh, would like to know more, there'll be a link on the website or to uh, check out the company and they can tell you more. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.